Todd Martin here with the walking code and the Martin movement method. I'm going to switch it up from walking technique to discuss running because periodically I get questions about my thoughts on the pose method for running. And I've been looking into it quite a bit recently and it is something that really has an emotional pull one way or another. It seems that people are really attached to pose method as the gold standard to running technique, or they think it's complete nonsense. And I wanted to break this down because it would be easy to dismiss something out of hand that seems to, on a physics basis, not make a lot of sense. But then when you think about all of the organizations like CrossFit and the military that are intricately involved with the pose method, you have to think there's something to this that maybe you're not seeing. So I wanted to use the mechanical basis or principles of the Martin movement method and the walking code to take a deeper look at the pose method and what it is describing and help you determine if that has validity or not and what people are getting out of it who do believe it's helping them. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'm gonna probably break it down into more than one video because there is a lot to unpack here. If you're interested at all in the subject of running, I recommend watching all of the videos because I think you're gonna get a lot out of it even if you have no interest in the pose method. And of course, as usual, make sure to click the like button if you enjoy the videos and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. Let's go ahead and get started. The pose method begins with the basic concept that we all move through various poses in different activities. And running has a particular pose that everybody goes through regardless of how they run. It's part of our human anatomy and how we interact with gravity. From that pose, we fall forward under the influence of gravity without using any muscular strength. And then we simply pull our support leg up and swap it out for our swing leg to begin taking the next step and moving forward. At no time do we need to push off using our muscles. We are strictly using the force of gravity to propel our body horizontally forward. And the faster we lean or fall forward, the faster we're going to run. There's also a component of the pose method that advocates for a more forefoot or at least midfoot landing, not reaching out with the swing leg and landing on the heel. But the primary discussion for pose is regarding the mechanics and not necessarily the foot strike. I'm going to break this down into sections, first looking at the theory of pose and how the description of how gravity works with the body holds up to known physics. Then I'm going to describe the mechanics of running from the perspective of the pose method, but also from the perspective of the Martin movement method. For those of you who are not already familiar with my videos, in my movement method, which is based on the eight fundamental energies of Tai Chi, I describe the patterns of core movement that we all use each day to move through all of our daily activities while keeping a vertical posture on two legs. It's based on the Tai Chi principle that all movements are directed and guided by the core and then powered by the legs or the hips. As we look at the pose method, we're going to be able to use the perspective of this core movement analysis to determine whether or not what pose is saying holds up or is misinforming people to some degree or another. Let me talk about the concept of falling. In Dr. Romanoff's pose method, he goes through the three pillars of pose, fall, and then pull. And we're supposed to find this pose and then fall forward using the force of gravity, not using the force of our muscles. And then we're supposed to pull the support leg up and replace it with the new leg. And as we cycle through this, we're able to run. And the faster we fall, the faster we run. 
at no point do we need to push off the ground, which is what the explicit assertion of the pose method is. So we don't need to use our muscular force. How do we reconcile this with reality? When we fall, first of all, we have to do something with our muscles. Right now, I am in a normal posture. And if I want to remove myself from this balanced position, I have to do something. And that something is going to involve muscles. If I want to do the absolute minimum, which is disengage all my muscles, I am simply going to collapse to the ground. And we could call that falling. But if I want to fall while keeping a vertical posture, it's going to require me to do something with my muscles to get my body to start to lean forward until I get to a point where I have no more balance and I have to do something else to prevent literally falling on the ground. So this moment of leaning requires us to do something with our muscles. In the walking code, I describe this very frequently because it's one of the problems people have when they walk forward that causes them to lean. Leaning is not done from the ankles. If we try to keep everything up here neutral or static and pull forward from our ankles, this is what's going to happen. The body is going to collapse underneath us because we're not moving from our center. In Tai Chi, we learned that all movement has to begin in the center and then our ankles and our knees and our other joints, even the arms, are going to respond to this movement. If we're not moving from our center, then we're not going to be able to sustain normal posture, even in the sense of leaning forward. Where we lean from is going to be the upper part of our core. So practice this exercise. Standing with normal posture, reach forward with one of your arms and then maintain that normal posture. This is rotation of the core that keeps us in a stable standing position. What happens when we lean forward, supposedly from the ankles, what we're doing is rotating forward from one side of the core and then at the same time turning forward with the other side of the core and that pitches the body forward into what someone would call a lean. We're not leaning from the ankles, meaning the ankle muscles are what's pulling us forward. The muscles that are making us move forward are here in the upper waist. When we turn one side at a time, we keep vertical posture. When we turn both sides at the same time, the forward flexion from our upper waist muscles causes us to topple off of that vertical position. So that is the muscle action that's happening. Although when we do it, it will feel like we are not using any force because there's nothing stopping us from doing that. I'm not having to pull away from any force that's pulling me back. So I can certainly lean forward or fall forward in this sense without using any actual force, although I am using muscle rotation. Now, how does this apply to pose running? The challenge here is that when I lean forward in this manner, and this is how Dr. Romanoff and other pose instructors have people do this exercise, they put their hand in front of the person and have them lean into them, which is the fall, and they support them in that fall until they start running. The problem is the forward lean in that manner can only be taken up to the point where your center of gravity is over your toes. You can't go any farther than this without actually falling forward and catching yourself. The next challenge is that when you do that, any lean that you do is lowering your center of gravity. So even if I lean this much and then replace my support leg, I am now lower than I was when I started. And if I maintain that same height and lean forward again and replace my leg, I am now even lower still. And with each successive step, we're going to get lower and lower. And when you see people 
doing this in pose running demonstrations, if somebody lets them go as they fall and they catch themselves, this is where they're going to be. So at some point, you have to use force to push against the ground to get yourself back up to the neutral standing position. You cannot continue to fall forward with a horizontal energy if we're only using gravity without losing the vertical position. You can't fall even a slight bit without losing that vertical. But when you see people running with pose method, and if you use Usain Bolt as a good example of pose, you don't see any loss of vertical height at any point during his movement. Although Dr. Romanoff describes Usain Bolt running as classic pose running style, when we look at the demonstration with Dr. Romanoff and his student, we see a very different result with a significant lowering of the vertical height and center of gravity during the fall from support. There is something different happening here, and I'll explain this in the next video.